People get fat. People gain weight all the time. And people lose weight all of the time. This is not anything new. And there's a variety of reasons why people gain weight. Poor habits. Maybe you're coming out of a six-year clubbing phase where you drank three days a week every single week and you realize that you have a little pouch hanging in front of you. Or maybe you had a baby or maybe you're on medication. Whatever the case is, there are a lot of reasons why people gain weight and there's also a lot of reasons why people lose weight. But there's also a lot of reasons why people gain that weight back. Now, this is not medical advice, but if you're wondering, why is this person, this random internet person, talking about weight gain and weight loss and all of this other stuff when she herself probably needs to lose a few pounds? Well, you're right. I have been a fitness professional for almost 20 years, and my weight has fluctuated over the years for a variety of different reasons. PCSing, habit changes, whatever. But at this point in my life, I don't really have a ton of excuses. Except... It you know, I got fat. <laughs> and yet I've put on some weight. So today I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to create a meal plan for myself to follow to help my process of losing this weight. Now, this is not a fix all. Creating a meal plan is not just going to magically help me lose weight. Assuming the rest of the other pieces of this overall health puzzle are in place, then sure, maybe it could help me. But I can tell you because it's me that it's not. There are a lot of other pieces to this puzzle that I need to kind of fix in order for me to be successful on this plan. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to show you guys how I develop meal plans, not just for me in this case, but how I develop meal plans for all of my clients. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about who develops meal plans, right? Who should you be going to for, for this sort of stuff? And the quick answer is not a lot of people, right? Your favorite fitfluencer, you know, probably doesn't have enough experience to write you a meal plan, or maybe they do, but the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. Top of the line, creme de la creme. The highest point in the meal plan writing process is going to be a registered dietitian. It is literally in their job description. And becoming a registered dietitian is not easy. I don't care what anybody tells you, becoming an RD requires a lot of work, a lot of school, and a lot of hands-on training in order to even be qualified and to fill the prerequisites you need to become a registered dietitian. They are the ones who create meal plans. So when you go to the doctor's office and you see that MD or that PA or that nurse practitioner and you tell them that you want a meal plan or nutrition advice, it's not in their wheelhouse. They're going to send you to a registered dietitian. Now, there are a lot of registered dietitians out there who have their own like practice or have their own company. And I would honestly say that if you're looking for nutrition advice, they would be the first place that I would tell you to go. However, like I just said, it requires a lot of schooling, a lot of training. They're not going to be cheap. I personally trained with John Jewett and then his wife at some point, Renee, and it was the they were the best trainers I've ever had as it relates to nutrition. And I learned a lot from them, so much so that I developed a fascination with nutrition and became a certified nutritionist, who I would say fall right under registered dietitians in terms of subject matter experts. That's not to say that the self-proclaimed nutritionist out there isn't just as qualified. I do feel as though that certifications are great. At the end of the day, it kind of just means you pass the test. However, certifications require you to have a level of understanding of a variety of areas. And someone who isn't certified might not have this broad scope level of understanding just simply because they've never been exposed to it. And, you know, that's okay. There are a lot of nutritionists out there who are not certified, who aren't registered dietitians, but are still pretty spot on with their nutrition advice. And that's, that's a whole other conversation. But basically, in terms of hierarchy, registered dietitians are going to be at the top. I'll argue that PhDs in nutrition science would also be up there. Then we have your certified nutritionist, then we have your self-proclaimed nutritionist, which are sometimes just personal trainers who had a nutrition lesson through their 
certification course as a personal trainer. So then I would say certified personal trainers are right under nutritionists. And then underneath that would be everybody else. Education is important, right? Education has value. If it didn't, then you wouldn't go to see the MD when you needed surgery, right? (laughs) There's value in education. There's a reason why you see someone with a higher level degree, a postdoc. There's a reason why you go to a lawyer when you need legal advice and not some, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry on the internet, hopefully. My cousin Vinny! But basically, there's there's benefits for you as the consumer to to seek advice from people who are educated. And just a quick note, both my dogs are snoring in the background. Um, I don't apologize. They're adorable. (laughs) But that's the noise that you're probably hearing if you're hearing anything. So with that being said, yes, I am a nutritionist. I am not a registered dietitian. And while I've learned a ton from registered dietitians, they would be the creme de la creme. They're going to be the ones who are going to order blood work, who are capable of interpreting blood work, who are capable of then implementing a meal plan, a nutrition plan, a course of action for you to take that is comprehensive, that involves your primary care physician, that involves other, you know, subject matter experts and specialty doctors to develop this nutrition plan for you. And that's why they work at hospitals and that's why they're awesome. My fascination with RDs is now over and my inspiration to becoming a nutritionist and pursuing health psychology and holistic holistic medicine, rant done. We have to be moving on. That being said, I still got some motherfucking weight to lose. So let's get into kind of where to begin when it comes to creating your own meal plan. So these are the four phases of health that I emphasize in my coaching. These are by no means all of them. These are just the ones that one, I know enough about to provide value to help clients and two, that I'm legally allowed to do without any sort of license. So the first aspect of overall health would be your physical health. This is going to be your nutrition, your workout and fitness plans, your recovery, rehabilitation, and your sleep. Then we have your emotional health. How do you manage emotions? How are you at developing resilience? You know, are you able to foster healthy relationships? Then we have mental health, and that's going to be cognitive function, stress management, mental clarity, and I am an advocate of therapy, right? You don't have to go to therapy because you have a problem. You can just go to therapy because you want to make sure that you check in with yourself. So definitely a huge advocate for for therapy. I am not a mental health professional, so that is something that I do talk to my clients about, not to provide mental health advice, but to kind of focus on cognitive function, stress management, mental clarity. That's where I fall while also advocating for seeking professional, you know, mental health services. And the last piece is going to be spiritual. This can mean religion, but it also means finding meaning, finding purpose, and finding connection, right? This can be through meditation, mindfulness, and a ton of other practices. So with that, the first thing I want to look at is my bad habits. If I'm being honest with myself, which I'm going to try to be as vulnerable as this is speaking to a camera and talking about all my bad habits, but one thing that I know I have an issue with is snacking. Another bad habit of mine is portions. I eat a lot of really healthy food. That's not a good thing. I eat too much of it. A lot as in too much. So I know that portions are another issue that I have. And the other thing is, I honestly, I do eat out a lot. Basically, yeah, snacking, portion control, eating out a lot. Now, I tend to eat a lot of sushi. I don't really eat a ton of like fast food. Honestly, I don't even really eat fast food. If I eat fast food, it has to be because I'm in bumfuck nowhere and the only thing I can trust is the McDonald's. And even then, it's rare. Um, I also am not really a big fan of certain things. So let's write down some of my dislikes. And mind you, I do this for clients as well. However, normally when I get to this p- like point of creating a meal plan and a nutrition plan, one of the wickets of things that I do for clients, but I've already looked at their consultation form. You know, while I don't interpret blood work, I do look at their blood work. But at this point, I would have a general idea of their current health status as I get into this. And then the rest of what I need from them is subjective, like bad habits and dislikes. So what do I dislike? I am not a fan of red meat. I absolutely hate pork. And what I'm going to do, which I do for all my clients, is I 
I highlight dislikes. I want to make sure that even if I come up with a bomb ass plan that I'm taking into consideration the shit that they don't like. Um, and then I also ask them like, because the consultation is normally going to be something that we have just, yes, they fill out a form, but it's also going to be something that we are in a, having a conversation with. And during that conversation, I'll ask questions like, are you open to trying new things? If so, kind of where do you draw the line? Like, what's your safe word? The safe word is alley cat. <laughs> right? If you don't like fish, I'm not going to have you try sushi. But if you've never had sushi, are you willing to try sushi? But not that I would ever put sushi on a meal plan. But you know, maybe maybe I will. So we have red meat, I don't really like pork. Um, and that's really the extent of what I'm not really a fan, fan of. And other things I don't have to say, right? Like me not liking fast food doesn't have to go on here because it's not going to be in the meal plan. So the next thing I need to do is figure out what is my total daily expenditure? Or sometimes people refer to this as their basal metabolic rate or BMR. So BMR is your baseline. It's how many calories does your body need in order to keep your heart pumping and your blood flowing? Then you have your total daily expenditure, which is a little bit more of a subjective value, which is your, your BMR plus the calories you need to perform activities. And that could be in a deficit because I'm trying to lose weight. It could be in a surplus because I'm trying to gain weight, right? Build muscle. Or it could just be, you know, I meet those calories. I'm content with my, my weight. So now let's look at that. If you're watching, I'm going to share my screen. If you're not watching, on the MB Fitness website, we have something called the calculators tab. And in that calculators tab, you'll see a BMR option. You'll go to BMR. You'll click calculate your BMR. It'll take you to the bottom of the screen. And this is where you're going to enter your weight, your height, how old you are, your sex, and then your activity level. So my weight is what my goal weight is going to be. And my goal weight, I would like to lose 20 pounds. So I'm going to put my goal weight, not my current weight. Because I'm not trying to figure out how many calories I need to stay here. I'm trying to figure out how many calories I need to lose weight. So my goal weight is 165. And that might seem like a lot for you guys. Um, if you know how tall I am, I'm 5'3", but I'm pretty muscular and 165 has always been pretty legit. I've been pretty low body fat at 165. If I do all of the other pieces of this overall health plan correctly outside of the meal plan, like the training plan and stuff like that. So I am 63 inches. I am 34 years old. I am a female. Now my activity level. If I was making this for a client who is sedentary and I want them to start working out, I'm not going to assume that they're going to work out six to seven days per week, which is why the beginning part of training with me when we're in the phase one of my training process, which all my clients go through regardless of your goal, which is figuring you out, right? There's more to it, but as it relates to a meal plan, I need to figure you out. I need to figure out like if you're sedentary, are you able to work out one to three times per week? If you're already working out one to three times per week, can we kick it up a notch, right? Can we consistently work out at least three times a week? So for me, I am lightly active right now. And I know for me, at this moment in time, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to exercise more. But I want to be at that three times per week. So now, granted, this meal plan that I'm making, these calories that I'm determining are going to change in a couple of weeks because once I've established good habits and I've established, you know, a majority compliance, I would say like 60% or more compliant with my meal plan, I'm 60% or more compliant with, <clears throat> with everything else, all of the other kind of categories of overall health that we talked about, then I'm going to kick this up to up a notch and I'm, you know, things will change from there. But for now, this is telling me that my total daily expenditure at 165 pounds is 2,075.08, we won't even include that, calories that I need per day. Now I'm just going to show you at 185, everything else stays the same. My height, my age, I'm still a female, I'm still lightly active at... Oh, at 185 pounds, I would need to consume 
2,195 calories. So this is putting me about 100 calories, it's about 100 calorie deficit that I need to be in over a long period of time. And my maintenance calories would be about the same or my total daily expenditure. That's cool. I would say take this with a grain of salt. And this is kind of part of the pre-phase one where I get an idea for myself and for clients if this is too many calories. Is this too much for you to eat? Are you, is this not enough for you to eat? You know, this is kind of where we get to play with this. But this is a good starting point, especially if you yourself have never done this before. This will at least kind of get you started. And then honestly, if it's too much or if you're just not having any success, then sure, reach out to a trainer. Now I'm going to go to macros, which is another calculator on the MB Fitness website. And I'm going to go to calculate your macros. Now, on each of these calculator pages, I talk to you about kind of what it means. What are macronutrients? I talk to you about what are what is a BMR, stuff like that. So I want to figure out what my macros are. Now, I have a standard calculator in here, and this is what is recommended by most three-letter agencies, which is 35% protein, 40% carbs, 25% fat, essentially as your macro split. I prefer a little bit higher protein. So down on the bottom of the page is another macro calculator where you decide the percentages. Now, if I plug this into the recommended values or recommended macro split, we have 2,075 calories in here. This is a little bit better. And honestly, the reason for me showing you this is because I would use this calculator first. I would use the recommended split first. And I only say that because unless you know how to manipulate the values and unless you can sit here and realize that, wow, 233 grams of protein is a lot of protein. Like that's like a hundred pieces of grilled chicken. That's an exaggeration. It's like 10 pieces of grilled chicken, but still that's for me, that's a lot. So I'm going to stick with this, which is telling me that I need 182 grams of protein, 207 carbs and 50, let's say 58 Let's make that 208 and 58 grams of fat. Now I give myself and I usually give my clients plus or minus, right? Like a tolerance. You should be eating between what and what. So for me, I would like to be between 160 and 182 grams of protein, between 180 and 208 grams of carbs. And then fats, honestly... Fats can fluctuate, but remember, for every gram of fat, it's nine calories. It's very calorically dense. So what I'm not going to make this tolerance too much, but I'm going to say 45 to 58. While I've arbitrarily chosen these numbers, I normally say plus or minus 10%. For newer clients who are really struggling with their nutrition, I don't want to set them up for failure if they've eaten too much or not eaten enough. So I will sometimes make this plus or minus 20%. So I can see how they're adhering to the diet. If they're able to stay within that plus or minus 20%, then I can slowly crank that down. Now, that is, that is it for determining our macros. Again, keep in mind, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. I've chosen these these values, it doesn't mean you have to, right? I, I think for me that this is going to work really well because I'm used to eating between that amount of protein. Well, I'm used to eating that when I'm actually eating right. So now let's continue. The next thing I want to look at is what is in your fridge. For me, I happen to have a lot of really good stuff, but I'm not a wasteful person. And I know that every single personal trainer out there is going to just log off right now. But I don't really believe in just throwing stuff away. But I, I don't believe in overeating. So in terms of like trying to get rid of food, oh, I need to get rid of this bag of chips because I'm starting a diet plan. I'm going to eat the whole thing now. Like, I don't want to do that either. So what I want to find out from clients is what's in your fridge? What's in your fridge that's probably not the healthiest thing? And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Now, now when I say fridge, I'm going to say fridge slash cabinet. But... I have trail mix. Is that terrible? No, it's also unopened. It's been unopened for a while. I bought it for hikes, which I haven't gone on. So there's, there's a telling of myself there. Okay. Trail mix. The other thing that I have that 
is probably not going to be on this diet plan is mozzarella sticks. Which is basically string cheese. <laughs> I love string cheese. Uh, guilty pleasure there. You want a juice box and some string cheese? <laughs> some other things that I have in my cabinet are, I have a ton of like healthy snacks. I normally take these things, you know, to go on a hike. But, you know, you go to Costco and you buy a thousand pack of fruit rolls. I'm like, how did we go to Costco and buy a year's supply of condoms if you weren't going to use them, man? I only need like two to go hiking or a handful for a backpacking trip. It takes a long time to go through them. But it's something that's in my fridge, even though, or in my cabinet, even though I didn't buy it with the intention of overeating, I'm going to be putting myself in a deficit. And I might, because I know that I have, you know, snacking as one of my issues, maybe I kind of resort to snacking on things I wouldn't normally snack on just simply because I'm working through some bad habits and I'm working through being in a calorie deficit. So I'm going to put it on here and I'm just going to say snacks. It's all kind of like healthy stuff. Like I have those uh, egg white bars. There's like four ingredients in them. It's just like egg, white, egg whites, peanut butter, and like a mix of nuts. A lot of the snacks that I have are not terrible, but the same can be said for a lot of things. And if I'm eating them and putting myself in a caloric surplus, they're still going to contribute to my weight gain, no matter how organic or gluten-free or clean they are. Key concept there. Okay, so I have, I've written down all of my bad habits. I've written down the things that I don't like, the stuff that's in my fridge that could become temptations for me. And then I have like my set calorie goals. Now, I'm not going to put... All of the numbers on here will be here all day because honestly assigning and figuring out calories for each meal is very time consuming, which is generally why you pay a really awesome personal trainer a premium price. It's because they're doing that legwork for you. However, I do just like to stick to my macros, right? I want this to be kind of what it is. Now for me, and for clients, I generally start them off with just macros. Eat whatever you want as long as it fits in those macros and you don't, you know, go over your macros, over, you know, throughout the day. Now, I have a custom branded app. So all everything that I give a client, everything that they need is in one app. It's in one MB Fitness app. But since you guys don't have access to that app, <laughs> um, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like if I were to write a whole meal plan. So for now, this is just an example. Things might change. But for meal one, um, I fast in the morning. So there's two things that I didn't mention. Some, maybe not necessarily bad habits, but some general habits is I fast. And that's just, I grew up that way. It's I'm just so used to not eating or drinking anything when I first wake up. Um, the first thing I do have is water and electrolytes. Um, I was trying AG1 for a while. I still have some. Now, I take AG1 as a multivitamin, just, and not even, it doesn't even really contain everything that you need, but that's a whole, that's a conversation for another day. I don't believe it's marketed for what it actually is, but I do actually enjoy it. So I, st and I still have some, even though I'm not subscribed anymore, but so I generally fast for the first, I don't know, one to two hours. Water and electrolytes, AG1. I also go outside every morning. Now, this is to let my dogs out, but we spend a few minutes out there, sometimes 10, 15 minutes out there. It's also one of the only times during the day that it's not a thousand fucking degrees out here. So I go outside for 10 to 15 minutes. Other things that I would consider if I was my own client are things like I have PCOS. So for me, I'm not on any medication. That was a personal choice. There are tons of phenomenal medications out there. If you're on medication, I hope it's helping you. I didn't want to be on medication. I am a holistic coach. And while I do practice integrative medicine, when I say integrative medicine, I mean, I'm not, there are some really good things in Western medicine that could be incorporated into holistic medicine. It's called integrative. Anyway, I digress. But that means I want to include some gut health stuff. And for me, what's really helped improve my gut health is fermented, gosh, my handwriting is terrible. If you guys are watching this, I'm sorry. 
is fermented foods. That's going to be things like kimchi, sauerkraut. I always have that on hand. There's also things like kefir. Kefir is kind of hard for me to get used to. It just f will forever taste like sour milk. Um, I know some people are just like, no, it's just like yogurt. I'm like, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up, man. <laughs> um, anyway, so gut health is something that I pay attention to. The other thing is water. Lots and lots of H2O, baby. So we want to make sure that we're drinking a lot of water. All these things contribute to healthy gut health. Um, the other thing is just eating whole foods, right? Letting your body reach some sort of homeostasis and balancing itself out. And that kind of goes into phase one is kind of resetting your metabolism. And for me, phase one in the program that I have created that I've been successful with for almost 20 years is phase one is kind of understanding the client, understanding your habits. Also also for you to develop a little bit of self-awareness as to how you got to where you're at. And you, maybe you know. And I got fat, like fat, fat. But it's very nuanced. So during phase one, we start to incorporate some better habits. We start to kind of minimize and eventually eliminate any bad habits and kind of incorporate things that we really enjoy. So this plan is enjoyable. Now, the whole goal is so you're not on a diet plan or a meal plan or a fitness plan forever. It's so you can get to your goal and then just live your life. And then from there, that's kind of like our fourth phase technically, where we have a little bit of a, a lifestyle aspect to our training program. And then you graduate. And then I hope to never see you again, right? I hope that after you, you graduate, that the next time I see you, it's not for coaching. It's for you to tell me all of the amazing things that you've accomplished because you're healthy and ha healthier and happier. Okay, getting back to the meal plan now. So I know that I have to have 2,075 calories. I know that I have to have about 160 to 180 grams of protein, 180 to 200 grams of carbs, and then 45 to about 60 grams of fat. I'm going to write a basic plan, but at the end of this, I'm just going to let you know that there is a lot of tweaking that would need to be done. And I do this for all of my clients. I'll put down a great meal plan. I'll verify that it matches their consultation form, that it matches the notes from our video call or our call, and that I've incorporated, you know, ways to improve the bad habits or eliminate the bad habits. I have made sure that I didn't include any of the dislikes that maybe there are some of the things that are in their fridge and their cabinet, but we're not including them in the meal plan so they consistently go out and buy chips. It's just to help them slowly eat less chips and then maybe no chips unless it's kind of like a free meal or something. And then incorporating as much as I can into habits. So for me, meal one, or I, I like to call these moments, um, which might sound super hippie, but... Uh, meal one, moment one is kind of, I would consider like the morning. So for me, it's when am I starting my day? When am I, you know, finally eating after fasting? So what I like to have is some good old water plus electrolytes. And then I like to have, uh, I probably don't have my AG1 right away, but that's going to be kind of moment one. And then I'm going to, you know, go outside. Blah, blah, blah. Right. I'd probably say about 60 to 90 minutes goes by. I'll say 90. And then I'm going to have some coffee. And then here is where I'm going to actually cook something. Um, I generally don't drink my coffee when it's super fucking hot. I'll let it cool down, which takes about five minutes or so. And that gives me enough time to, you guessed it, Make some eggs. <laughs> I love eggs. I could eat eggs for every single meal. I love eggs. I get my my eggs fresh, like straight from the chicken's ass, right down the block. There's a chicken farm. I mean, I live kind of in a wine valley. Everybody has a homestead. Everybody has chickens except for me. Um, but I'm going to have eggs. And for me, I like to have, yeesh, I'm going to have three egg whites. plus one whole egg. Now, not every morning, but some mornings I end up just giving the yolks to my dogs. I have friends who are bakers who will actually save the egg yolks. I'm not a baker. I don't even know what the fuck you would just use egg yolks for. 
but there are things that you could do. I will sometimes just cook the egg yolks and leave them aside and give it to my dogs as snacks over the course of a couple days. But you can find ways to, to use the egg yolks and not, you know, throw them away if you don't want to be wasteful. Like, I don't like to be wasteful, so I try to find other things to do. Um, if the eggs are extremely fresh, like came straight out of the ass of a fucking chicken that day, I will sometimes give it to my dogs raw, but they're on a raw diet, so that's different. Anyway, so I will have three egg whites, one whole egg. The one thing I also fucking love that's in my cabinet is cream of rice. I don't remember. I was working with a trainer who recommended cream of rice, and that shit changed the game. It's like farina and grits had a baby. I don't know what it is. In that cream of rice, I will tend to add some honey, not always, berries, and if I can find a fat source. Sometimes this is peanut butter, sometimes it's coconut oil, some, not coconut oil, sorry, some sort of coconut. Um, I will add some sort of fat source in there. I try to not use any other sorts of fats like when I'm cooking or in my other meals um, unless I know that I'm going to eat an avocado and then I won't have the oil, the coconut, or I won't use oil in any other part of the day. So that's basically meal one. Meal two now, granted, I'm writing this because I know myself. I would have to talk to my client about this if I was going off the cuff. <laughs> Sometimes trainers will go off the cuff and it's just not a good plan. Like, this works best for me, but if I were to give this to you, you might be like, I don't fucking know what cream of rice is. I don't want that shit. Or I don't like coconut or I'm allergic to peanut butter. So it's like this plan just out goes out the window, right? Or maybe you don't fast in the morning so you want to eat something when you first wake up. So this kind of scheduling is not going to work for you. Meal two, I will have a protein source. Now, I know for me that I'm not eating enough protein by any means. I think I'm averaging like 60 to 80 grams of protein a day. That's horrible. So I know that means that I'm going to have to find other protein sources. For me, I prefer lean meat. I don't like red meat, but I prefer lean meat if I'm going to choose a protein source. And I, that's only because... Plant-based protein tends to come with baggage. Sorry, I'm <laughs> dumping all my baggage on you. And that baggage is in the form of carbohydrates. And instead of eating a bag of lentils, I would prefer to have grilled chicken breast and rice. Just a personal preference, though. So, meal two, I actually, right now in my freezer, I have ground turkey. That's just like the 25,000 pack from Costco. <laughs> Got tons of it at Costco. So I'm gonna have ground turkey. This is a 93.7 blend. Could I have gotten a leaner package? Probably, but it's fucking Costco. <laughs> Costco. Right? They don't always have everything that you need. And then you end up buying a 25 pack of ground turkey and you just gotta make it work. So we have to make sure that we keep um we have to make sure that we're keeping track of the fat throughout the plan. So right now the Two main sources of fat are going to be from the whole egg, in all honesty. The coconut or peanut butter, whatever I choose for that. And whatever fat might be um, from the cream of rice, which I don't actually think. I think it's straight carbs, but I'd have this is just something that I have to double check. Again, rough draft of a meal plan. So I'm going to have ground turkey. And depending on the day, because I do like to carb cycle, I might have rice. Or I might just have that shit on top of a salad. Now, I have a vegetable garden, so I can just go outside and cut some lettuce or some kale. But I'm going to have a salad or veggies with this. I am up to my fucking ears in squash. If you follow me on Instagram, the squash that come out of my garden, they're normal size squash. But the problem is squash is kind of harvested too soon, which is why when we get in the supermarkets, it's kind of like this little itty bitty thing. Whereas squash grown in someone's vegetable garden, you can grow that shit till it's 25 inches long and it's just thick. It is just a big ass piece of vegetable. Sure, she's skinny, but she's thick through the trunk. So when I pick one squash, it lasts me all week. Just a long way to say that I'm gonna have vegetables with my turkey. 
Um, and then I could possibly have, um, with the vegetable, I could have rice or I could not have rice. I tend to only have rice on training days. Again, personal preference, but that's going to be my meal too. Now, I will say that the last major meal I'm going to have is going to be my last meal of the day. And I will rotate meal two and meal three. Meal three is normally going to be another protein. Now, I prefer salmon here. Taking into account how much fat I might have had throughout the day, salmon may or may not be an option. I just fucking love salmon. Or it's going to be some sort of... I prefer ground beef if I'm going to eat any sort of red meat. Uh, so it'll be some sort of ground beef. And to be completely honest, I don't even patty that shit. Burgers are great, but I, I don't even fucking patty that shit. I just make that shit in a pan, ground beef, boom. Meal three, I, again, depends, but I will always have a carb with meal three. And in this case, I'm going to have potatoes because I grew them in my garden. Um, I'll probably just have one whole potato and then veggies again. Okay. Those are my three main meals. What I would do now is I would kind of count the calories, count the, the macronutrients, and then I would incorporate snacks. So snacks, I'm going to have in between the meals. Not You don't have to have them in between the meals. I sometimes for clients will just kind of list snacks on the side and they can eat them whenever they want throughout the day. But going back to what I have in my cabinet... I have trail mix, mozzarella sticks, and assorted snacks. So I'm going to say for if if I want to have a mozzarella stick, mozzarella, I never thought I'd ever say it like that, mozzarella. Yo, put some extra mozzarella on that motherfucker and shit. Okay, so if I have string cheese, there we go. Um, then I don't need to have the coconut or the peanut butter with breakfast, right? So if I want to have a mozzarella stick later that day or string cheese later the day, like as a snack, then maybe I don't include a fat source with my meal one because cheese is extremely fatty. And to be completely honest, I really do try to limit my cheese, but I enjoy it. It's something that I enjoy. And as long as I'm not eating 25 string cheese sticks a day, then you're usually pretty okay we also don't want to eat them every single day, so that's kind of like a little bit of a guilty pleasure for me. So I will have a mozzarella cheese stick. Um, I don't know why I keep calling it that. I'm pretty sure it's just called string cheese, but here we are. Pay for the string cheese and get out! Now when I look at the other snacks that I have, I have trail mix, which is mostly peanuts and raisins. It's going to be really high in carbs and fats. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to incorporate that. So this will be a maybe. And then the assorted snacks that I have are going to be things like fruit snacks, which I could say fruit snacks could be my other, uh, my other snack. But I also have actual fruit growing in my garden. So I would also say fruit. Fruit is good for you, right? I'm not going to eat a bushel of apples, but I'm going to have some fruit. And then the last thing is the snack that I'm going to have at night. I don't want my nighttime snack to be anything with carbs. That's just a personal preference of mine. So either I'm going to have a mozzarella cheese stick here. Man, I keep on saying mozzarella cheese stick. String cheese. Cheese. I can't get with it. But to be completely honest, I tend to not snack at night. If anything, I will like to have a diet soda because I feel like that's my dessert if I have a diet soda especially a like root beer I'm not really a fan of, I'm not really too big of a fan of cream soda but if I have a root beer at the end of the night I like really spend my whole day looking forward to that like that soda that sweetness at the end of the day so that's what we have now the next thing that I would go do with this rough draft is I would calculate the macros. Based on this, I think it's okay as long as I limit the cheese and I figure out, you know, if I'm doing a lean beef, they can't really, there's no such, really no such thing as lean salmon. 
But as long as I account for having some sort of fat with meal three, then I can play around with the other pieces. Maybe I have fruit after meal one as my first snack of the day. And then maybe I save my mozzarella cheese stick for the end of the day if I haven't reached my fat goal. So this is a great plan. This is also contingent upon me working out three times a week. So this is, this is the if you worked out plan. Let's put did you work out plan. This doesn't work for everybody. It does work for me, or at least it has in the past. I'd have to go into this kind of not bringing any assumptions, but on the days that I'm not working out, I really do try to not have so many carbs. So this is great, but maybe I don't eat as many carbs, but that will sometimes make people hungry. And if I'm going to stick with the same calorie goal, then maybe I increase the protein because protein will make you feel full. Also, protein takes a ton of energy to digest. And by energy, I mean calories. There's tons of benefits of eating protein and maintaining lean muscle mass. I'm not going to get into the science of that because this is just supposed to be me teaching you about how I'm going to make a meal plan for myself. But basically, that is essentially how I approach meal planning for myself. This is just one very quick, very small aspect of how I would create a meal plan for a client. There's a lot of, a lot more numbers that would go on the page. There's also a lot more of kind of confirming with their consultation form and with the notes that I took that this is going to work. I, I happen to not have a ton of dislikes, right? I'm not really a fan of red meat or pork, but there are clients who I've had clients that don't like a lot of things or are allergic to a lot of things. And that makes creating a meal plan a little bit more difficult or they have celiac. So they're, they're legitimately gluten free. So it's, can I make this meal plan with products that I know are available, not just anywhere, but in their specific area? Cause I do online training. So if they're in bumfuck nowhere, corner of bumfuck and you got a pretty mouth. And there's a town mart that doubles as a hotel, a gas station, and where you bury your mom, like, that's, that was a terrible example, but you get my point. That's a bad joke. Poorly timed. Like, if it's a one-stop shop town, then, or one-stop light town, jeez. But, basically, if they don't have gluten-free options, then I need to keep that in mind, right? Can they order on Amazon? Is it, you know, is it affordable if they get it somewhere else? But these are, these are a lot of things that go into creating a meal plan. This is probably one of the simplest meal plans I've made because I know all the answers to my questions, right? Because I'm filling it out for me. I know what my bad habits are. I know what I have in my fridge. So there's so many questions that I'm able to answer like right away that I sometimes don't get the opportunity to have some of my questions answered for clients. So when I give them a meal plan, I'm like, hey, listen, this is the meal plan. Let me know how you feel about X, Y, and Z. Let me know if I need to swap anything out. And I give them time to give it a once over. I make last minute changes and then they have their meal plan, which doubles as their grocery list. I do not like to create meal plans where I tell people what to eat for every meal because life happens. If you have to go to the DMV today and you're there for 25 fucking hours and the only thing that's in the area is a 7-Eleven, then I like to give you some freedom by just giving you your macros. Now, with that being said, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you can try and maybe give your, your own meal plan a stab if it's something that you've never done before or if you are looking to maybe lose a little bit of weight or maybe gain a little bit of weight. Maybe you're trying to build some muscle, right? Those are also goals that people have that are, I think sometimes people forget that those are goals. I have a lot of clients who are just trying to put on some muscle and that's okay. Now, the one thing I want to say though is keep in mind that this is my first meal plan, right? Not ever, but this is the first meal plan to help me get back on track. This is not a forever plan. This is probably going to last a couple of weeks until I go food shopping and then I'm going to incorporate different foods. I'm going to stick to the same macros, but it's not going to last forever. The other thing is I might, I might start working out more. So I don't want a crazy deficit of a thousand calories, although that might be great, but you know, how do I feel after, you know, expending all those calories and having this huge discrepancy in caloric intake? So 
just something to consider. The other thing is like anything too extreme is going to be difficult to adapt to, right? AKA you're, you're going to set yourself up for failure. And if you set yourself up for failure, then you're going to be less likely to follow the plan. Now, Choose choose a diet that works for you. As you can see, this is a somewhat balanced diet. I could probably use some more veggies. I'm only getting half the amount of veggies that I should have. But choose a diet that's going to work for you. If you like keto diet and you know it's something you're going to stick to, then cool. Just understand that whatever, I call them elimination diets, whatever elimination diet that you choose, it's not forever. None of these diet plans are forever. They're supposed to get you to the point where you've reached your goal. You've lost the weight. You look good in the mirror. You feel healthy. Your blood work comes back great. Your physician also approves that you're healthy. And then you transition to what I like to call kind of like a lifestyle plan. I wouldn't even call it a plan, but it's a lifestyle phase, which is just in perpetuity. It's your body is now set up metabolically for success. And as long as you maintain healthy and, you know, healthy habits and good habits, then you should be okay. But it's also okay to have a beer once in a while. It's also okay to, you know, I I love, if you love Big Macs, it's okay for you to go out and have that. Now for me, it's football season. I love having a beer and some wings while I watch the Giants game. You know, bleed blue, let's go. But I can't do that every day. <laughs> so if I'm watching Sunday football, Monday football, Thursday night football, Friday night football, Saturday college football. That's a lot of beer and that's a lot of wings. That's a majority of my my meals. (laughs) Then I'm obviously going to set myself up for failure. So for me, I only have a beer and I'll only have something like wings during the Giants game. Go big blue. (laughs) That's that contributes to kind of another aspect of train any training plan and that's stress reduction like that to me is enjoyable because it's kind of you know a stress relief for me and that i believe outweighs anything else as long as i'm not relieving stress multiple times a week another point i want to make is that a meal plan again is just one aspect of an overall kind of coaching plan especially the ones that i create there are things that go into this, right? I already talked about it. Your physical health, it's your mental health, it's your emotional health, it's your spiritual health. We need to make sure that all of these things are aligned. Are we managing stress? Are we establishing good sleeping habits? Are Do we have some consistent root workout routine? Are we doing our cardio? Are we doing our zone five cardio? And I'm not trying to overwhelm you because today is just about a meal plan and I'll cover all of those other things. But it's, it's just something to consider when you're going into this. If you can really nail your meal plan, That's one less thing you have to worry about. And if you've established good habits and established a healthy relationship with food, then you can say, okay, I'm not, I'm getting somewhere, but I could do better. So maybe, you know, I'm going to focus next on, you know, my stress management or my sleep or things like that. Now, in terms of priority, I would say stress and sleep should like rocket to the top of your priority list. But I chose to start with a meal plan because, This is kind of the easiest thing to show you and to talk about. And at the end of the day, you could just hire a trainer, right? I I would pay any amount of money for a quality trainer, for a quality nutritionist who could help me dial in, who could motivate me, who could keep me accountable. I would. I would pay any amount of money. And I've, I've had a ton of phenomenal trainers throughout my career, not just people who helped me while I was pursuing a, a bodybuilding hobby, I guess you could say. But there were I had a ton of mentors and a ton of coaches throughout my life. And I've learned so much from all of them. Some of them what not to do and some of them what to do. And on top of my own education, I've learned that sometimes trainers are the best way to go for some people, right? They exist for a reason. So utilize that resource if you feel that's what you need to do. I would say there are a couple of things to consider. The first being, are they capable of motivating you? Which I mentioned already, right? Is there a chemistry there? The next thing is, the plan that you received was it made for you? If it wasn't, that's okay. But then ask them like, hey, is this a cookie cutter plan? And if so, why do you have me on it? Some trainers might say like, this is kind of the general plan we have people on for the first couple of weeks while we work in the background to create your final plan. I don't really necessarily agree with that methodology, but they, everybody has everybody has a method to their madness. And if that's not okay with you, then find another trainer. But it is a question to ask. 
The last thing, and I think the most important thing is, do they care about your overall health or are they just trying to help you lose 30 pounds so they can share your before and after pictures on their social media for clout? Because anybody can lose weight, right? That's not, anybody can gain weight, anybody can lose weight. It's keeping it off or keeping it on, whatever your goals are. That's the true testament to the quality of coaching. If your coach was able to help you lose weight, but then you gained it right back or whatever the case is, now I wouldn't blame it on your coach, right? You're also responsible for your success. How is it my fault? But there could be problems with the formulation, with the plans that you were given. So consider that. Consider trainer that you're going for and are they looking at your overall health? That is the key point, right? And if they say, yeah, no, absolutely. We're looking at overall health. Ask them what overall health means to them. I've already told you that for me, I kind of split up overall health into a few different categories, right? We have the physical health, which is nutrition, workout and fitness, recovery, rehabilitation, sleep. Then we have emotional health, right? Or how are you ma at managing your emotions? Are you developing resilience? Are you, you know, are you able to foster healthy relationships? If not, what are some techniques that we can implement to help you with that? Then we have mental health. Are you, are you in therapy? Are you enjoying that process? How is your cognitive functioning, right? Are you experiencing any sort of mental fog? Again, stress management and again, mental clarity. These are things that are incorporated into my kind of structure for overall health. And then we have spiritual health. Are you incorporating any sort of meditation or mindfulness? You know, do you have a way of finding meaning and purpose that is kind of what I consider to be all the different aspects of overall health. So ask yourself that when you're talking to your trainer, when you're going through the initial consultation, is what do they consider overall health? And is that okay with you? I just listed off a bunch of stuff and maybe you don't really care too much about spiritual health. So you're like, hey, listen, Jesse, I'd love to hire you, but I don't want any of that spiritual health stuff. And it's like, that's fucking fine but at least you know what I consider to be overall health. There are other trainers out there who have other aspects of overall health that they consider. Like I know of a trainer who considers functional health its own separate category. Well, I kind of put that in with physical health. He makes it his own category because he's a physical therapist and that's understandable. Now, again, I've mentioned a ton of references from my own website. I mentioned that I'm a coach. I mentioned that I do all of these things. And while these are all shameless plugs, just know that I offer a ton of free training programs. All you have to do is go into the MB Fitness website and you can start any one of those plans. They're beginner plans. They're there to help you kind of start to establish healthy habits to kind of lean into working out, especially if you're someone that's kind of maybe been out of the gym for a while. Maybe you don't want to go to the gym. You want to do some workouts at home. There are three plans to choose from. They're kind of tailored to different starting points, but the point is they're all there to help you start somewhere. And it's for absolutely free. It's just to help you get started, to start to develop these, these habits. And hopefully those free plans paired with kind of some understanding of how to create a diet plan will help you start to inch your way towards your goal. You can check out the MB Fitness page at mbfitnessusa.com. That's MikeBravoFitnessUSA.com. Or you can just go to JessieVerga.com, which is the name of this podcast. And you can go into the fitness tab and it'll take you to MB Fitness. Again, entirely free, just a free resource out there for you. But along with that, if you want access to everything that I did today, copy of the notes, everything that I presented, if you weren't able to watch this, or if you're listening to this and you see me doing a bunch of stuff, if you want any of these videos and any of the resources that I'm talking about, they're all going to be in the description at jessieverga.com. With that, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Mm -hmm.